Hello everyone, this is Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. Welcome if you're new, I am so glad that you are here today. So in my last video, I showed you um, creating your own layering stencils and we made a couple of cards. And as you'll recall, I had lost video, so I wasn't able to show you the actual creation process of the stencil itself. And I promised you a part two that did just that. So I'm going to show you how to use your Cricut to turn plain acetate sheets into layering stencils so that you can make a card, you could put it on something else. Um, I'm just going to make a card this evening and I wanted to bring you along on part two so you could see how those stencils in the last video came to life. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna need is you're definitely gonna need some acetate sheets. And I have four here because the design that I chose for this evening has four different colors. So we will have four different layers. And then I have my strong grip mat for my Cricut Joy. You could use a regular mat for your Cricut Joy. You could use your Explore or Maker Machines as well. Really, it just depends on what you prefer. Then um, I'm going to make a quick card with the stencils that we make this evening. So I have a 110 pound card base. I have a card panel, and this is probably about 65 pound. I have four inks that I chose for the design, my blending brushes, and then a little holiday sticker with my logo for the back of my card. Okay, let's head over to Design Space so that I can go ahead and get started on the layering stencils and show you how to create them yourself. Here in Design Space, I have already pulled up a canvas and I chose a design for this evening. So I really just went into Images and I searched up Christmas and I really liked this particular image, and this is called Christmas Word Collage, and I brought it into the canvas for us to work with. Now, I will be linking this design space file in the description below, as well as listing all materials and supplies used so that you can um, easily find those things at your convenience. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of do a mock-up of the card because I want to get the sizing correct. So I'm gonna go to shapes, bring in a square, and I'm going to change this to four and a quarter by five and a half. So this will be the card base. And I'm gonna go ahead and change that to white. And I'm gonna move it over here to the side. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to shapes. I'm gonna grab another square. And then this time I want to change it to, let's see, let's do three and a half by um, 4.75. And this will give us a nice margin. Um, you can, a lot of times I will also do 3.75 by five but I really want a bigger margin this time, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and lock that so it doesn't change on me. And then here is something really neat that I just learned recently. I'm gonna turn this into a guide. I don't, I'm not gonna be cutting this because I've already cut that with my paper trimmer. Um, I have kind of a stack of those, but I'm gonna turn this smaller rectangle square into a guide. So I'm gonna to go to the operation menu and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and click on guide. And what this will do is it'll change it to that hot pink color that you see a lot of times when you are doing like um, infusible ink mugs and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna move the guide over here and you can see this in my layers panel that I have a square guide and a square basic cut. Neither one of those we are gonna to cut today. I'm gonna to go ahead and do a line center. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and attach those. And that way they just don't move apart. They're gonna be right where I want them the entire time. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is 
I want to bring this over and I did resize this earlier when I first brought it into the canvas. So I just want to show you it was actually quite ginormous. I resized it down. Now I'm going to move it on top of the guide area like right there and I can select all, align, center. And so this is what my card will end up looking like. And the pink line obviously will not be showing on my cardstock, but you'll get an idea of the margins that we have going on. So I think this is great as far as sizing is concerned. So I am going to literally just hide the card base and the guide, and I'm gonna bring back the Christmas word collage all the way to the left. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this until I have a total of four. So duplicate, that's one. Duplicate again. Now I have three, and I'm gonna duplicate one more for four times. So all of these are the exact same size. They are the size that I want for my card. And now I have four copies of them. And now what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna go in and we're gonna use the contour feature. So what you can see is you can see that some of the words are red, some are green, some are like a goldish yellow, and some are like a pale, I don't know if that's a pale pink or a pale yellow. I guess we could go zoom in. So it almost looks like a beige, really. Okay, so the what we're really gonna do is we're gonna contour things, okay? And that would be easiest to zoom out and bring this down here. And I'll show you why we're doing that. Because when you click on your image, okay? And I'm gonna open this up in the layers panel over here, okay? Um, this particular design actually already has everything kind of layered for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find if I click on that one, I get rid of the yellow, I get rid of the green, and I get rid of the beige. So now this is my red layer. And I like to come over here and instead of having it saying Christmas word collage, I can say Christmas words red. So I just change that in my layers panel, okay? Then I'm gonna to go to the next one, all right? And bring that down just so we can kind of get some space here. Um, this time, let's see, gonna open that layers panel. So we did the red layer, gonna get rid of that. Then really it doesn't matter which order you go in. So I'm just gonna hide the other three and you can see where I kind of have, I'm gonna call it the gold layer Okay, and so I'm going to click on the, the words again and Christmas words and I'm just gonna write gold. Okay, so there's our gold layer. And then we're gonna have our next one. So we've gotten rid of, we have the red, that needs to go away. We have the gold, that needs to go away. The next one, um, I'll get rid of the fourth layer. So the next one, oh, that leaves us with green. So again, I'm gonna retitle in the layers panel. Let's see, Christmas words, oh, not great, green. Okay, and then here is another one. And we're gonna, this one we want kind of that light beige color. So we're going to open the layers panel. We're going to hide the red, the gold, the green, and that leaves us with this layers panel right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna come up, change the words again, and I'm just gonna put beige. So now at this point, we have all of our four different layers. I'm going to bring back the card panel for just a moment. Bring over the joyful. 
Okay, and we'll bring over this this holly one. Let's see where. Oh, I just moved that that size. Okay, so jingle bells I think is at the top like that. And then we're going to have the December. So we're just kind of piecing this back together. And then we'll have that one like that. Okay. So sometimes it's actually quite helpful to leave one. In fact, I'm going to duplicate it one more time. Bring this over. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to go ahead and turn back on all these layers to make sure that we got them where we needed them to be. So when I go to do this on my card, then I can reference this in Design Space and I can see where everything needs to be. Now, all four of these are going to cut separately, so it's not a huge deal if they're not ex super exact in spot, but it does look like I did a decent job getting them where they need to go. And as long as I don't resize anything, we're good. Okay. So the fifth one right here, I'm actually going to do um, Christmas words and I'm going to do original. Okay. And I'm going to hide that because I don't need that to cut. I'm going to go down and hide the card base in the guide. I don't need those to cut. And now we have these here. So what I want to do before I go to the cut screen, to the make screen, I am actually going to click attach on each one of these. And that way I'm telling my Cricut, please leave all those words exactly the way you see them. Okay, and it looks like it's renaming them in my layers panel. So I could go back and change the names for you. So these will all be attached when you open. When you open the file, all of these are already attached, ready to go. I will rename these for you again. I will leave the original in here and I will leave the card base and the guide. All right, so card base and guide there right now. And that will all be ready to go for you when you open this file on to make sure that everything is going to look correct in our make screen. So I have my joy selected, but again, you could do this on any of the machines. I'm going to click make. Okay, so after we hit the make button, it brings us to the make screen and you can see where we have four different mats. Now, my acetate sheets are four and a quarter wide by six and a quarter tall. And what I really want to do, I can always cut those down um, a little bit, but what I want to do is I just want to bring the um, corner here. I want to bring it down kind of in the middle of this, of this first box. And that way I just have a little bit of border around there. And that will be more for... Um, putting it on my card panel, I'll have a little bit of room to tape everything down. I'm going to go to this second one and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. And then the third mat. And the fourth mat. All right. Now, something that I notice is that my mats are 12 inches long. And this only goes to four. This only goes to four and a half ish. This goes to four and a half ish. And this goes to about five. So what I could do is I could move one to the top of a mat and one to the bottom of a mat. So let's see what that looks like. I'm wondering if we can change this to be from four different mats to two different mats. Just want to see what that kind of looks like. So this one here 
the corner of that cut box, which we're not cutting a box, but the corner here of that image is in the middle. And then I would do the same thing here. Okay, so I can actually get two on a mat. Let's try that with the last two. I'm gonna go to that last mat, click on my three little dots, click move, move it to my third mat. And I'm not worried about the color because again, this is all clear acetate. So, okay, so I'm just moving so that this corner is down in the middle of that box. This one here is up in the middle of that box. So I think this is gonna work. The next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna click continue, and you can certainly just have four mats total. That is totally fine. Now we're gonna connect to the joy. Once I'm connected to the joy, I'm going to go to browse all materials, and I am going to type in acetate, and then I'm gonna select here, it says foil acetate. I'm gonna go ahead and select that and click on done. And then I'm just going to, um, the last time I did this, I did, I can't remember if I did more pressure or default pressure. I'm gonna go ahead and do more pressure just to be on the safe side because I don't wanna have to run the image through twice. I think it, on the joy specifically, you can't just hit the play button automatically like on the maker and have it just run a second pass. You actually have to unload and reload and I don't wanna compromise the cut. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my mat ready. Then I'm going to load. Notice it does just require the fine point blade. So then we'll load and we'll go. Okay, so I am giving a split screen here with my, um, you can see my mat and my joy here, and then you've got design space right over there. So these are my acetate sheets, and I'm just gonna show you how, well, I, literally I just put them in the top corner, just like I would any vinyl. And this is, you know, the strong grip mat. If I were using the standard grip mat, I might add a little piece of washi, at least to, you know, the sides or the top and bottom, one or the other. And then this here, I'm going to put down here in the bottom. Now, I'm using one mat to do two cuts, which you totally could just do one cut per mat. And because I have a little bit of an overlap right here, I'm just going to take a piece of washi. This is not going to affect the cuts at all. I'm just going to make sure that these things here don't interfere with each other and mess up my cut. So then I'm gonna go ahead and load the mat into my machine. And we will click go. Oh, one more thing before we click go. Since I'm doing more pressure and I'm using foil acetate on the second mat as well, I'm gonna go ahead and click that checkbox that says remember material settings. And that way I don't have to do the selections in, uh, again. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click on go. And then this will just, this will just cut like it would if it was vinyl or cardstock. Okay, now I'm gonna click on load. What you'll notice is that you can see all of the words are cut and I'm just going to bend the mat backwards like I normally would and I'm going to very gently pull off the acetate sheet and then a lot of times it will self weed like the acetate letters that we are cutting out will stick to the mat. And so when I pull the sheet off, okay, so you can see here, I've still got 
the words, so I'll have to scrape those off. But then here is my stencil, and I don't have to weed it. Now the caveat is, since these are letters, um, I don't have the ability to, like these middles, like if I wanted the middle of the O, so that would be something that you would probably have to, um, after you ink blend, just take a similar color and draw in a little round O for the middle, if that was something you wanted. Otherwise, it will be like some of the designs where you see where the middles are kind of just blank which is totally fine as well. Okay, so here we have holiday and Christmas, rejoice and mistletoe. And there's a couple on here I'm gonna have to kind of punch out the acetate. Then what you're gonna do is, if you're like me and you only have like one mat, then I'm just gonna have to push these little acetate letters off just like this. And they just come right off. But we definitely want them off because we don't want them to get in the way of the other sheets that we're going to cut. Now our mat is clean. All of these little acetate letters will just go in the bin. So now we're going to Do the same thing, we're going to just line up the acetate sheet. Okay, there's the first one, and then the second one. Oh, I have a little A, got left behind. Okay, so then, there we go. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to plop down a tiny piece of washi tape there in the middle just to kind of hold everything in place as far as the middle is concerned. All right, open that back up. And then, okay, so we've already We've already cut mat two, so I'm gonna, this is actually going to cut mat one. You can see where everything is still selected as before. We're going to load. And then we're going to go. Okay, so now we will unload, and we are done. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close the joy and move that off to the side. And then, okay, so while this second mat was cutting, I went through each of these sheets here. And what I did is I just kind of made sure that all of the metals were, were weeded out. Okay. So there's one. Okay. And then this is two. So you can kind of see. All right. And now we're going to get these off of the mat so that we can make sure that all of those are weeded out correctly. And then we will do our quick little card. Let's see where we might need to... Okay, so this one, we've got looks like December, 
and Noel, that did good. And then this is Mary. Okay, so this one is good to go. So I'm gonna leave that be. And then grab another deal here. Okay, so looks like I've got an end that just needs to come off here. Just we'll pop it off just like that, nice and gentle. So we have jingle bells. This E needs to come off. Again, nice and gentle. And you can you can see when they you've got a letter that's still kind of stuck in there hanging around. Okay, so all of those. So the next thing is for us to decide what colors we are going to do with what layers. Now we can actually always go with the way it was in Design Space. So if I were to pull up Design Space here, So it looks like the joyful is red, the holiday is green, so I'm just going to kind of marry these colors here. And then we have jingle bells, that will be our color there, and then our lighter one here. Okay, so. Just, you can always check design space. You can absolutely decide that you want to do colors differently. All right, so I'm going to um, just put down, I have like a little sticky mat here. It's, it's a really low tech kind of mat, but, and when you have um, sheets that, so like I have a mat and this little protective sheet, I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose this particular sheet. So I just put some washi at the top so I would know where it was. Okay. And then I am simply going to just get this to where it's just kind of in place. It's not going to go anywhere. And we are going to start our ink blending. All right, so this is my card panel. Now this panel is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to literally put all of them in the same place. Let's see here. How about I put it there? Okay, now because I'm going to be cutting this down, then I want to basically put this here where, let's see, um, I'm going to come in to three and a half. So that's four and a quarter. I'm going to come in to three and a half. So I'm actually going to put this pretty close to that edge there. I'm just going to line it up. Oop. Make sure it's okay. And then it does overhang, so it's nice. I can just let that stick down. Okay, and then I'm using my Concord and Knife inks today, my little um, cubes. I have a very small space, so I just use little ink cubes. And this is Wildberry. So, and it's a, it's a pretty wild color. All right, so a lot of times I will start circular motions on the 
acetate sheet and that way it'll take off anything that's kind of, it'll help with the blotchiness. larger the letters are, I think the, the easier it is to make this stencil. Um, you can always choose uh, uh, shapes and objects like I did for the last video that I made, but I did want to try out some words and just kind of see how that worked out. Alright, so this is our first pass. And I'm just going to peel this up. And now these, to clean these, I just spray them with some rubbing alcohol. You could also just put them in a little dish of soapy water next to you. And I'll worry about this in just a little bit. Okay, so that's, and I'm not going to worry about this because we are going to cut that off. Okay, so that takes care of our wild berry. And let me take care of that. This is the beauty of a glass mat, is you can just, okay. Now, referencing design space, I know that holiday, Let's see, Christmas is right above the piece, and so we're in between, we're in between the Y and the E, here's Christmas, Rejoice is above Bright, Mistletoe is next to Bright, and Holiday is in between, and I think I found, I've got one more letter, there we go. This is eucalyptus, okay, again, Concord and Ninth, these little cubes. I purchased these a while back when I got a sampler of their 2024 paper colors, and I purchased the bundle that came with the little ink cubes, and I am really happy with, um, actually, I'm going to put that there. Let's, you know, not enough room. All right, so again, I am going to come in. So this is called eucalyptus. But if you notice, that is, that's actually a really nice green for Christmas. It's not too light, not too dark. looks great for the eucalyptus. So set that aside. Okay, and I'm going to lift this one up. There we go. Okay, so our next one is the Jingle Bells. Okay, so Jingle Bells is really close to the other J, the holly and the rejoice line up. The snow is above, so everything here. So again, I'm just referencing design space. And I am putting everything, let's see, putting everything in place and letting it stick down on the mat. So this color is creamsicle. I love creamsicle. Wow, that is really bright. So, creamsicle. And it's really, it's more like a, a super light pinky peach. And it's just really pretty.
pull this up completely. I want to see what this creamsicle looks like. And I'm trying to decide if I like that. Oh, it just popped right up there. Or if I want to see about bringing in a little bit, maybe like a, a, like a goldish color. Let me put this back down. And line that back up. And I think it's a little, a little bright. So I'm going to grab something called Fossilized Amber. And this is a Tim Holtz Distressed Ink. I'm going to see if I can just tone that down just a smidge. It might not be what I'm looking for. Okay, so that is more of a yellowy and that is more of a peachy. So let's go ahead and do the rest. And if we end up not liking the result, you know, it's just paper. And we can I can always just do another panel in a different color scheme. I think I'm going to let that just... Then our last color is called Watermelon. And let's see. So Noelle fits right in here. Mary fits in there. December there. So that is nice and lined up. And this is a super awesome pink color. I really like the watermelon. So I'm going to pull that up, and this is our card panel, and I'm just going to release that, okay, so definitely not super traditional, this is more like a, like a berry, the green is spot on, and then the, the creamsicle slash yellow yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Let's get it finished, put together. May change my mind there. Okay, so I'm going to move this mat out of the way. Put all those. Okay. And then I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. I don't think I have any ink that's laying on top there. Tiny paper trimmer here, which is really nice, this little guillotine. Now I can absolutely do the three and a half, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so three and a half is here. And that might be just a little too wide. I'll have to look at that. And then here it's actually four and three quarters. Okay, so I'm going to trim this down and then we'll see if we need to trim it any further. So I will also grab my card panel. Okay, so we've got the card panel here. And before I trim that down, I'm actually going to fold this and that way I can see how it's all going to play out. Alright, so I'm just matching up those corners. I'm not real sure where my bone folder is at the moment, so I will just use my 
little scraper tool in a pinch. Okay, just want a nice crease right along there. Okay, move that to the side for a minute and let's check and see if we like the sizing. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so something else that I have done in the past, if you are wanting to, you know, have a little dimension is I'll take my card panel and I'll just go around the edge with the colors that I use. And so Let's see, I might try that really fast, just, just to see what I think. And you don't want a whole lot, you just, just a little bit, just to give it some, you know, dimension. I'm just going to go along the edge. That is a very strong wild berry. Alright, I think that I got all of the ink. Hmm. Let me err on the side of caution. I'm just going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just make sure that I don't have, I don't want the rest of my card to get ink. So just a little spot clean. Oh yeah, check that out. I'm glad I did that. Oh <laughs> yeah, if you don't have rubbing alcohol in your craft space, definitely add two cart next time you are at the store. Okay, now this, okay, see, this is this side, right? It's not bad. I like it, but then that just gives it a little something extra. So now it's time to build this card. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little logo sticker. This is just the Cricut brand sticker paper and I got a design and I put my little logo on it. It's a Christmas sticker and I'm literally just going to pop it here on the back. And what's neat about this is I can do these for any season or holiday, etc. And um, just kind of give it a little festive spin on the back. All right, and then we have this here. And I think that, let's see. Well, I'll just put that there so it doesn't move. All right, now we're gonna take this word panel and we're actually going to put some foam teeth phone tape down. So I am just going to take the foam tape that I purchased from Hobby Lobby and there's one. we can get four on here. So I realized today 
that I have a little less than a month before classes start. So I definitely have a lot on my crafty to-do list. So that will be fall and back to school and I might do some Halloween things this year. So fall, back to school, Halloween, and definitely Christmas crafts and Christmas gifts. Here is, do that so I don't stab myself there. Okay, and then this will just go down. Normally I would line this up using my Misty, but I think this will be okay. All right. Press that down. Move that out of the way. And then you just have a little bit of loft. Not very much, just, just a little bit. And then... We've got only a couple of places on here where we have like some uh, white space, which there's nothing wrong with white space at all. But this is, um, I got this, I think this is, well, it's called Aura, Aura Opal, and I don't remember if it's Spellbinders. that one there. We need a small one. We can put a small one up there. And we really just need a little, a little bling. Okay. I think I'm going to go with that. That's a total of five, you know, good, nice, good, odd number. I think, I think the words are nice and easy. I think I do like the shapes better. So like those flowers in the last video, oh, those were so awesome. If you haven't seen the last video, it is, it's a good one. But I wanted to show you how to actually make the stencil. Um, and then sometimes, in this case, this design already had four different layers to it so I was able just to hide the different layers but other times you have one thing and then you just contour out the pieces that you don't want um, for each of your different layers and that's how you get that effect okay so here we go this is our this is our layered stencil Christmas word collage. Well, I hope that you found this video was informative and um, inspiring to make your own layered stencils using acetate sheets. Now, again, this particular design in Design Space was already four separate layers, so I just had to duplicate it until I had four copies and then hide each different layer so that I could have four cutouts. This particular one from the last video, this was one design and I had to duplicate it four times so that I could just contour out the pieces that I didn't want for each of the different layers. So I will probably make another video soon doing some Christmas trees with ornaments that kind of goes back to this where I'm contouring out images instead of just hiding certain layers. But in the meantime, I hope that you were able to get an idea of how to create your own acetate stencil and manipulating the layers is so easy. So here we go. We've got a nice Christmas card. And until I see you in the next video, if you found this one helpful in any way, or inspiring, don't forget to share it with your crafty friends. Hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know the next time something is posted to the channel. And until I see you again in the next video, 
as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.